It's quick art talk time, motherfuckers. And welcome to today's episode. We're going to talk about inspiration. And, well, first and foremost, talking about a title, how to get started with concept art, right? Like, you know that you have passion, for example, for video games. You have passion for art. You have passion for, you know, actual designs. Uh, video? Did I say video games? Yeah, video games, movies. And you know you enjoy to draw, and you know that that job exists, but how to get started in the most efficient way to increase your learning curve, right? Um, we at Focal Point want to, of course, you know, communicate, you know, that in the best way to our students. But, you know, for those of you, you know, who for some reasons can make it, you know, physically to our school, I still want to spread kind of, you know, the word in the most basic way. Of course, it's still nothing compared to what I am to do, um, you know, physically in class and individually with every student. But still, <clears throat> um, you know, I would like to, you know, get um, get it, you know, done with to, you know, be able with you guys to, you know, reach as many people with, you know, the message that we are spreading with uh, with focal point. So yeah, how to get started with concept art. The first and foremost thing that you have to realize is again, you know, the definition of concept art. If you haven't watched that episode, which is episode one, link is in the description. You can, you know, link that and have, you know, a 20 minute listen again, you know, how we define concept art at focal point and you know, how we efficiently are tackling it. Once we define it, we have to start with the inspirational aspect right since we agree that concept art is a very creative job it's you know it's a source of creativity and we are solving problems visually uh, like I also said earlier we have to also you know then say that we are um, or we need the inspiration to get inspired so how to get inspired you know because we all have these days that you sit back you, you know you have to draw, but inspiration doesn't kick in. And then when the day is over, for example, or when you're not working anymore, or you're out of work, uh, you're under a shower or in bed, then the idea suddenly kicks in, right? Because that's sometimes how we work. It's sometimes super annoying that once you're in front of the desk, in that working environment, you can't get inspired. And so you like end up like, oh, when well, I don't know what to draw now. Like it's like I, I I know that feeling because we've I guess we're all human and we've all been there, right? So how to get actually inspired, which is actually again the first step to become a creative thinker, and you know which is super necessary for concept art. Um. So except for to start drawing, which I believe is still the first fundamental skill to obtain. I would say go outside more often, um, right? Especially in this day and age, I believe that we are, you know, too much locked into our screens. Um, Maybe be a laptop, computer, desktop, office. And even if you are outside, all I see is people being locked with their heads and their phone. Like, if you notice, like, try to have a conversation with one. Like, you can't. Like, they're not even, they're, like, there, but, like, not there. So, how can you be even an observer if you are not, you know, able to even respond to, you know, basic human communication? And, you know, that is sad. So, when I mean go outside, um, leave your phone for once right just say to all your friends that you are always so because you know they might you know be expected that you're always in touch just tell them uh, i'm gonna go out um or you know it doesn't have to be like long just go outside and for example if you're like going for the gym take a walk like i don't even have a car so i'm forced to take walks often right and i'm very i'm very impatient so i don't even bother waiting for a bus only when i'm in a hurry i'll just take a cab and you know arguably that's more expensive taking a bus but you know buses just take time and so just go outside and be an efficient observer right you don't have to you know walk for hours uh, 20 minutes a day to an hour a day do it multiple times a week right i cannot stress enough how important it is because again everything we design we extract that visual knowledge 
from the real world. And the better we know the real world, the better designers we'll become. All right? The better, the better in touch you are with our real world so again don't don't stuck on your phone don't be you know one of these you know people that are like only you know checking their stories on instagram sharing or posting all the time that will not get you far like believe me and i admit i sometimes also have this you know um um addictive tick where i just like check my phone too often like oh email oh instagram oh yeah because yeah we kind of like those likes on on instagram but like just don't do it like do yourself a pressure do your brain a pleasure and get inspired by the actual world around you so by doing that be an effective observer right so don't go only outside and just you know take a walk and you know be on your phone anyway or just you know be absent actually observe the world around you right observe the lighting around you observe you know the the man-made objects around you the nature you might pass you know a small river and then you just look at you know the reflections of the lighting um the stones the breeze the transitions uh the material transitions between a road and a grass all that is you know mind enriching for your um for your uh, visual library that you can later on use right um, here you seeing me doing this Mac uh, by the way if you're confused about the structure of you know how I'm doing these quick art talks um, I'm just you know running you know casually a, a you know a sped up tutorial but if you're actually interested in you know seeing one of these tutorial with you know actual commentary about the content that I'm you know creating here you can just go on my gumroad which is again and uh, the link is in my description you can there is like a small selection of um of art um of art tutorials line drawing uh, renderings and i want to increase it with like more stuff um because a lot of you guys are requesting it so i might you know even give um this one a longer version because i have it rendered i can you know just uh, the the source files i can just you know stream in um uh, or upload in you know real time with proper audio recording so uh with that out of the way now that you know you know how i work how these you know talks are structured structured let's um let's move on right so be an effective observer um the next one will be you know um well read books watch documentaries listen to podcasts right um so of course you know going outside can take you that far right and you know the advanced version of that is you know traveling um that is always beautiful you know being able to for example experience the mountain breeze um you know and the cold and the actual environment in a mountainous you know area is always going to be a more enriching experience than uh collecting reference of mountains on the internet right being able to go to a museum and actually you know see and touch the 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 museum pieces and experience for your own will have you know again a different impact because you're you're experiencing in in your real three-dimensional world and you're understanding the shapes and everything way better right um so yeah travel is even more enriching of course if you can afford it if you have you know the time and i think you should have the time for it then you should definitely do that too besides that uh, yeah reading books watching documentaries listening to podcasts uh reading books i'm personally uh, trying to read more and more uh, very bad at it um i have uh, trouble sometimes focusing so when i read i tend to like uh, you know catch my attention about you know a certain aspect of the text i continue reading but the new the the, the text that i continue reading it just i get absent minded because i keep thinking about the other thing that i read just a minute ago and then my mind bounces you know in between pages and that's why i'm a very slow reader um somehow when i read articles i don't have that because like i know that the article is a short read and then i can um uh, grasp my attention uh, to that way better so you know explore what works for you the best audiobooks can work for you better right so no excuses right uh, watch documentaries also very nice and enriching you can actually listen to documentaries too 
if they are well structured and you can do that even when doing work right let's say you know you had a long assignment you had something to design now you had to have to flesh out the design so you're like more on autopilot mode because it's just you know detailing you can you know uh, kill two birds with one stone and uh, listen to you know something that is valuable for you right so you do work and you enrich your knowledge even more so you know that's i guess that's efficiency again i listen to podcasts right now with youtube like there are so many interesting topics and uh, so many interesting you know um talks that you can find i personally like uh podcasts with um uh, joe rogan uh, most of them are pretty cool uh, he recently had even uh, Elon Musk on, so that was a very, very interesting uh, talk to see, um, you know, one of the most influential people um, talk and, you know, have a very thoughtful, meaning conversation, you know, that was pretty inspiring. And, um, yeah, the, the last thing that I wanted to talk about is, you know, all these things, you know, go outside, be an observer, um, uh, be, you know, attentive to your environment, absorb, you know, the knowledge that is around you. It's right there within your reach, you know, even if you claim that you live in a boring environment, I bet that, you know, I also live in very boring environments, but every time I was able, you know, to go out, you know, even like if you like look under a rock, you might find tons of inspiration, the insects and the little beasts, beasts, and the little, little creatures that, that live there, you know, you can like take photos, you can um, make studies of, of the, of the animals that you find, it's, it's limitless, right? So it's an excuse if somebody says, you know, I don't go outside because I live in a boring environment. I know maybe you have to like live in a in some kind of fallout um wasteland but even, even then come on like we played a game fallout because of its cool environment as well so there you go right i guess no excuses at all then yeah and then you know the last is uh, just draw which is um it's that's one that's one that's a tricky because that is actual work so Let's talk about that, right? With actual work, you have to have a fuel, the fuel of passion and uh, and enough will and um, and um, how do you say that? Enough enough power of will to be willing to you know sit down and draw, right? That's why I call it you know just draw. It's you know the the working aspect because in the end that is the most fundamental skill of every concept artist, um, you know. And yeah, how to start drawing? So you know, collect reference. That's an obvious one, right? Um, and from what should you take reference from? Uh, well, again, if you have trouble with that, I can I can help you. So here we go. Uh, reference from nature, hardware, architecture, um, history, right? So what we find in our current world was not always the case. So that's why it's again important to, you know, read, listen to podcasts maybe of, about history, watch documentaries on history to enrich your mind even more, All right? And um, let's talk about, you know, the, the obstacles that uh, we hear from students um, why they don't draw or why they think they don't have to draw basically excuses that they think they can get away with actually when i hear them it kind of makes me sad because the the the, the act of drawing should give you joy and passion right so tip number 1 if you are if you're watching this and um, you clicked on this video how to get started with concept art most likely you are thinking about it or you already started and you're looking for tips I think tip number one since we all agree all agree that we have to do all these things right which I just mentioned go outside be an observer read butch read butch read books watch documentaries listen to podcasts um, traveling and drawing which is actual work right start and that's the first tip start with the most simple things right don't tax your brain with you know all oh, concept artists you know all these complicated mechs like this sketch over here that i you know started to give a render um you know it's 
I need to like make a very complicated machine or a very complicated character and it needs to be unique. First of all, you want to just learn the skill of drawing and not designing, right? In this example, I'm designing already, right? I'm creating something that does not exist, yet it is referring to the real world and I am rearranging it in a way that it makes it look like it's a unique new thing, right? And that is a totally different skill that we can talk um, about some some other time. But, you know, to get started with concept art, the, the core skill of drawing is uh, super important. Um, here are some of the misunderstandments that we have with students that we, when after hearing it, we... Um, we try to correct them on the right path. So again, if you're not able to, you know, make it to any school, uh, including ours, or you don't want to, and you want these tips, you know, anyway, um, this is what we hear, right? Like, I don't want to draw until I learn the basics, like how to draw a figure or how to, you know, draw a landscape. Um, that is kind of like a, a paradox, right? The, the same paradox as if, you know, you can't go into the past and kill your grandfather because that cancels you out as well. So you might not be there in the first place to be able to go in the past and kill your uncle. Because it's like a circle that doesn't match up, right? It's a circle of failure. The only way to learn fundamentals is to start drawing, in my opinion, right? So, yeah, that is, you know... Just to keep it short, there you go, you know, out of the picture. Just start drawing. Don't do it for, you know, the nice picture. Don't do it because you want to post it on Facebook and get, you know, the attention. Don't do it for that. Think, you know, as you know, that you, the first and the first thing that you have to tell yourself into the mirror is, do I actually like drawing? Do I like concept art? If the answer is yes, then just start drawing. There is no other way around it. Then there is, of course, um, I prefer digital painting, so I might learn drawing later when it's necessary. Um, yeah, of course, that is possible. Since we agree that concept art, uh, illustration, is a creative process, I'm not going to force anyone to start with drawing first, or photo bashing first, uh, or any other method. Do what you want. I just know from experience and I've been also talking to um, many other instructors that are even way more experienced than me, that have been in the concept art field for many, many more years than me. And they all agree that the drawing is the core skill. Once you learn that, you'll be able to pick up digital painting even faster, right? So, because drawing enables you to think faster in 3D, there is less cheating in line drawing. Every shape, every form you make needs to be communicative, right? You're learning to think in 3D from the start. And you are, you know, being able to be more accurate. You're, you know, you're feeding your brain how to use your eyes, how to use your hand, how to use the smallest gestures in order to transfer what you have in your head or transfer what is, you know, on, you know, the photo that you're making a reference study of and transfer that in the most successful way on, on paper, right? So, um, that's why, you know, and again, if you look at, you know, the, one of the best iconic concept artists, right? Um, um, Sid Mead, Frank Fazetta, um, my personal favorites, uh, Fang Zhu, Ryan Church, they all have, you know, these fundamental score, core skills in common. They all draw extremely well. And then from there, they can do actually anything they want. Um, so, yeah, I lose interest quickly, so I just don't draw. Um, then I'm, I'm kind of like, no, I don't want to be mean. But then I'm kind of like, uh, why do you why do you do concept art then? You know, because again, I think it is kind of important to have some patience right if you what if you're tasked with an actual illustration or refining your concept or you know spending a lot of time of iterating a design you have to have the willingness to to draw right if you don't have that try to forge it right if you know that you want to do concept art but somehow you lose interest maybe you know you're covering topics that you don't like try to you know start with the stuff that you like and are easy to do 
So yeah, the next step we want to have, and I have it actually written down, so you know, I'm actually very bad at making notes, but this time I thought it would be beneficial. So I don't have the fancy Wacom tablets and tools and expensive computers to make uh, awesome drawings. Um, yeah, you, you don't need to, right? You really don't need the, um, the fancy, you know, um, uh, not the Intuos, but the other model, the, the Cintiqs, right? And that you, that you see everyone has, you know, in order to, to make those beautiful drawings. Um, you can just start sketching on paper right now. If, if you think that, you know, I've been doing everything digitally, um, it's still wrong. I still like, you know, the physical aspect. And luckily, this hobby is very, very cheap to pick up, right? Uh, paper is uh, luckily still very cheap. Uh, pencils are cheap, pens are cheap, and uh, that's all you need, done. Like, you don't even need an eraser, because I believe that when you draw, do quick drawings, um, make your, uh, train your gestures, um, learn from mistakes. If you make a mistake, start over or correct it in a way that you learn from it, right? It, it, you're being presented then with a creative solution. You made a mistake, well, maybe you can draw around it or continue that mistake in a way that it again benefits the drawing, right? Um, then, you know, the last one is of course uh, that I want to, to cover is um, I don't need to draw. Fuck drawing. Photo bashing and 3D for the win, right? Now we live in such an age that, you know, and that's true, you know, I know very successful concept artists that are relying on, on photo bashing and, 3D and you know 3D modeling and that's totally fine. It's that is you know I'm I'm not you know here to spread propaganda about you know how important drawing is. All I'm saying um, and I'm th well that's actually the case, but I'm not saying you know that is the only way. However, I still think it's you know a core skill to have, and I still do think that once you learn that, you will be an effective learner. Um, other tools. Once you understand through your own hands how to make dynamic sketches, you know, you're being responsible for every single line, big shape, small shape, big details, small details, then you will be able to, you know, use all these tools, photo bashing 3D, in through the most beneficial aspect. You have no idea how much I enjoyed my uh, my, uh, my assignment when I was working on the latest Hitman game. I never expected it because you know what they required is one realistic, realistic photo bashing. They required that, and I was not the type of guy. But because I knew my fundamentals, I know how lighting works, I know how shapes work. I picked it up very quickly. I was able to adjust pictures, photos, and make them, you know, um, subject to the lighting conditions because I knew the fundamentals. Um, so yeah, again. Uh, art directors, again, when they see that you are drawing, it shows that you are a dynamic thinker, right? And when they actually see that, they also know that you can you can photo bash. Like, if, if there is an experienced art director looking at your work, he knows how it is, you know, to obtain drawing skills. And how these drawing skills can then be used in many other ways. So, um, in many other ways, like, again, 3D... Um, even texturing um, and and photo bashing. So yeah, these are all the ways that I would like to you know say you know that you need how to get started with concept art. I know that this was uh, somewhat inspirational in inspirational for you. I would like to thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed.